welcome people to uh, have a discussion with Patricia. So you got so, so a couple, you know, just a little bit about her. Um, so she was born and died in 1992 and is a visual artist currently based in Washington, D.C. As a self-taught artist, self artist, she began painting in 2018 after receiving a BA publishing at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. She also has an MSc in marketing from Murray University and the current recipient of the ba Babs Van Swingen Memorial Award at Murray University, where she's pursuing an MFA studio art degree. She has experience in architectural design, marketing, and book publishing, and her work has been exhibited in Ghana, the United Kingdom, and the United States. Um, the pictures and sculptures that she creates become photographs of moments of time from an area of view. Through her organic use of color and texture and exploration of various materials, the Junkoku successfully depicts movement, change, and transformation within her work. She works with acrylics mixed with the collective natural materials such as beach sand, shells, rocks, coral reef stones, salt, ocean water, and man-made materials such as plastic, styrofoam, and glass to create works through abstract expressionism, sculptures, installations, and controlled spaces and digital film. And her work takes advantage of the performative nature of paint, natural materials, plastics, their ability to be molded and crafted, to create new forms and structures, to imitate elements of nature as the planet Earth and the universe exists in abstraction. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So, thank you guys for inviting me. I I just want to go over my practice and some of the things that uh, inspire the work that I do, and also just um, the type of experiences that I've gone through whilst uh, pursuing this life journey, which not most people want to branch into because it's very different from everything else. It's, it's hard, but yeah. So uh, it's been very uh, educative for me, learning a lot about myself and also the way that I see the world and just being able to create these things uh, from that um, perspective of life. So um, first of all, I want to um, talk about uh, my view of the world, which I, as a kid, I was always interested in what was out there in the sky. So we were always uh, at night, we're always uh, looking up to the stars and always wondering what's out there. And as a kid, I was always uh, very fascinated by that. And so um, through uh, just observing and also just always researching and looking at photographs from NASA and all of that, I was always uh, excited to know more every time. But I was uh, pushed through the education system, like most of us are, and um, I wasn't able to be an artist when I was younger. So I had to, um, for my parents and for African parents, like they always want you to pursue some type of uh, profession that's like either in medical school or like in uh, law or something like that. So, money. Uh, <laughs> right, money. So, so they pushed me to go through um, business, which was something that I love doing. I love selling and marketing. So I went through uh, high school and university and just developing that part of myself. and. Uh, I got to the stage where I knew that I had to make that decision for myself. If this is what I want to stick with for the rest of my life, I have to be in love with it and it has to be something that I'm passionate about. So that is when I began painting. And this was um, after uh, working in different sectors and different industries, working in architecture, working in marketing, working in advertising, working in design and um, I believe that these these different things also helped me in shaping the art that I have now because I know all these principles about art and even about design and architecture and how that affects even our lives every day. So um, I worked, I, in 2018 I fully jumped into being a full-time artist and I was 
uh, creating more work. I had uh, a room in the house where I lived, so I changed that into a studio, and then I started uh, pouring my soul into work. And um, I was looking into pictures of the sun, pictures of earth, and I was attracted to these lines that are more microscopic, but don't um, don't really. It's our it's our depiction of how these worlds or these stars or these entities look like, and so I was attracted to that um, form, those lines, and that mostly inspired some of the things that I do, trying to imitate those lines. So uh, this first image is of the sun, and uh, these lines are electromagnetic waves, and um, just even the shape of the sun, the, the perfect sphere, and then uh, with this, this is uh, a river, and just how it is laid, how it looks like, those lines, and just uh, also like broadening my perspective and looking into how we're just um, a little bit of a little piece of such a vast universe and just exploring those ideas and trying to make them which uh, sometimes doesn't work but um, trying to make images based on these lines and these uh, idea of like a higher power view of us as the human as the human race and just thinking about how these things are made. And even with um, our world, um, how we have these entities or these like portals and stuff that we might not see because of like our eyes, how light enters our eyes and all these things. And even like the spirit world, like when we're not here, like where we end up, Nobody knows until like you're in there. So I always had these ideas about like how it might look like and how it might seem like. So I try to, in a way, use abstraction to depict these lines and these ideas around just uh, how human beings are existing in this world and how we also see the world outside of us. So um, most of my words. Um, are named after astronomic, sorry, astronomic bodies, and this work is Canopus, which is one of the stars in our solar system, and um, is one of the brightest stars. And so I try to name most of my uh, work according to that um, idea around uh, the universe, around gases, around dead stars, around uh, just explosion of uh, of light, explosion of color, and uh, these images that we get from our satellites. And then um, I was looking into how to depict water, which elements mostly water, fire, and um, air, wind, and how <clears throat> these are also shown through these lines, which also imitate uh, these electromagnetic fields, and then also looking at um, texture also, and how, um, coming back to Earth, how we work with sand or like salt to, uh, for various things, for trade, for um, just beautification, or just, um, just sand and the beach or something else. So just using that, those natural materials to create uh, work uh, by mixing them and allowing the color also to be mixed with that to, in a way, as, as an alchemy type of thing, work with, um, mix the, the sand and the color to just see how that comes out, how those mixtures come together and how they react with each other. So <clears throat> I was working around that and um, some of the works when I do make them at the end, it uh, ends up imitating these things that I've seen and I, I just end up looking at pictures of uh, 
like the, the fires in Canada that happened, just how the pictures that they took of like the whole thing. I know it's, it was a really bad thing for most people because it took away a lot of life, I guess. And um, just looking at how that looks from the top, like from the aerial view of things. So I, in a way, find a way to depict these things and like how fire looks like when you actually look deep into it. And then um, I was also thinking about just um, how the sun also reacts with our atmosphere. And this was a photo I took uh, of uh, one of these uh, very bright day, and uh, this is a sun halo, and it's something that um, it looks like a rainbow, but um, nobody knows. I mean, how it's formed or what is the purpose of it, but we always see these rainbows around the sun, and it always has these fields, magnetic fields around them. And I was just fascinated by that and also try to mimic that. Um, this is this work I did. Uh, I was trying to look at um, just like how this spher spherical shape of this uh, rainbow around the sun and how clouds also have similar looks and the sun, uh, these moon, uh, the moons around our planets, um, just clouds and that spherical shape is something that was very interesting for me and so I looked into also using those type of uh, shapes to make work and also depict these type of things. And um, moving forward, looking also at uh, volcanoes and how they look from above and just how that um, it looks like it's sand but it's like a darkened sand and that the whole color and just like the look of it uh, made, um, inspired some of the work that I did after. Um, <clears throat> in a way also trying to mimic uh, these images that I saw and uh, trying to find a way to depict fire and sand and ash and also, uh, also looking at nebulas and also trying to depict the way to show them. So um, I'm going to skip through some of my work. Um, this is a recent work that I did. Um, this work is called Seven Sisters and it's named after, um, there's a cluster of stars in our sky that um, is called the Seven Sisters and they're like a blue set of seven stars. and. The history is that um, they were like a, a solar system and then um, their star died or something like that. And so it just crushed into, so it looks like uh, balls of uh, lights, not lights, but balls of color now because the star um, died and all of that thing behind it. So I was just fascinated by, by that whole idea of just looking at those through telescopes and just um, peeking into that type of life that is so far away from us. And um, and then uh, still being inspired by those shapes um, and using that in most of the work. And also investigating color too and making uh, work that has these type of uh, interactions of color. And um, also moving forward, uh, working with a lot of texture too, just trying to be able to use that to depict movement, to depict, uh, depict change. And uh, this photo is uh, a photo of all the galaxies. And uh, I was so impressed when I saw this photo because it, it, it is so big, but it felt so overwhelming that um, these are different different galaxies that are all in our solar system, but we're somewhere in there, but it just looks like it's uh, like a ball of sand, or a plate of sand, like it doesn't look like it's something that we have that much access to, but it's just something that's like beyond us. And I'm just inspired by how these things exist with us. And so I make, 
I made this work to depict that. Also using texture and color to depict those type of things, those type of entities and objects. And uh, still um, also developing these type of ideas that I had. And also working with different materials. As I said before, I was um, working with uh, sand and which are nat natural materials and then plastic, which is something that <clears throat> starts from a tree and then it ends up being molded by human beings to make plastic. And so um, I felt the need to do something with it because it was something that I was using every day and uh, I had no use for them after I uh, come out of the shop and that's it. So <clears throat> I decided to use it as a material because at a point I wasn't getting so much access to paint because it was around the COVID time. So I wasn't going to the stores and so I decided to pick plastic as the material. And then I started making these, um, uh, these mats in a way and mending, putting these bags together and molding them together. And it's something that I'm still working on. Um, as now I have, um, I realized that they actually look a little bit like uh, webs, which spiders make. And I decided to create a project on that to just develop further that idea of using plastic to be this type of fabric that um, can be used for different ways or used for different things. And I was continuing, um, conti I continued exploring that idea of uh, plastic use and how to even show the work and how to use that in case of paint, which was something that I was used to. Um, and then also the idea around plastic, which is something that um, unlike paint, is something that would last for a longer time compared to paint, which would probably um, tear it off or something. So with the plastic, I'm able to use that and know that the material will last a longer time, even after I'm gone from here. And yeah, just exploring that idea around it and mending it in different ways to show different um, works, different ideas. This work was made to mimic um, like a fossil, the fossil that they find from dinosaurs, like the, the bone structure. And I used the plastic to make that, make this work just to depict that idea that like plastic can be fossils and um, just how they look like, uh, how these uh, fossils look like skeletons. And I used that for this work. And also, further exploration onto, into how um, the world looks like, how our moons look like, the reason for our moons, and how these objects are circling around us, but they do control water, they control the ocean, and just how much that goes around uh, these spheres, these objects. And so I started depicting that with um, this work where I was just um, exploring spheres and using styrofoam to do that. And so I would have um, paint and I would put the, um, the paint around the, the styrofoam just to kind of indicate how that uh, decay happens with the styrofoam being eaten up by the paint and just using that to explain how these objects go through these different stages of um, decay or like uh, you, the hits from asteroids and stuff like that. So um, I use that to do these different um, installations where uh, I'm able to use these little spheres or balls to um, show that type of duplication, that type of decay, or that type of destruction that these spheres or these objects go through. And yeah, so uh, 
that is the end of my presentation. And um, I've just been circling, I mean, being, as, being an artist, um, you do go through these stages where you're always going to end up exploring ideas, different ideas. And there's one thing I've also actually learned in grad school that you're supposed to not put yourself in one box. And some of the ideas, these different ideas about, it might be about the same thing, but it's all these different ideas of life that you can explore to make your work. And it's something that I always um, find uh, refuge in to be able to uh, advance my career and also just be able to navigate uh, the art uh, world in a way. So um, it gets really tough, but um, I think uh, being able to just focus on what you want to do and how far you want to get is something that helps with um, everything that you do and even as an artist just being able to exist in this very uh, tough world because it happens everywhere it happens with uh, business like you you're with competitors you're with people who are always fighting for the first the top place it's just like that here with art so it's just something that has saved me in a way because i don't see myself doing anything else but being able to create every day and I'll be in bed and I'll have this idea and I'll want to rush to the studio, but I'll just like <laughs> sweep it off and then wait till the right time to just like leave and go and create something. So it's something that brings me so much joy. And I wish I was getting loads and loads of money right now, but I guess it takes time. So it's something that I love so much that I'll do anything for. So I'll, um, in that process of just being able to let myself go and hold on too much to like things of the world like pulling you back and trying to make you not do what you love and just like be reckless. I don't want to be reckless. So yeah, so that is our presentation. for yourself looks like in like these different spaces. Um, especially because the art world is very like white dominated. Um, and like you were saying before, it's hard to get like monetary things, especially in that world. Um, so what does advocating for yourself look like? So I think um, that has to start with you because people see potential. Like they see uh, confidence or just like the fact that you want to do so much for yourself and they would always want to put some type of backing into that. But it's different, it's sadly for uh, people of color because you always have to uh, struggle to get out of the stereotype and struggle to get out of like preconceived notions of how, notions of how black people are supposed to be like or how the things they are supposed to create and it's something that is hard to deal with because you just you cannot tell the story for everyone you kind of have to speak for yourself speak for what you understand the way you understand the world and be confident about that and be able to stand your ground in that in these spaces and um it, it, the only difference is it takes time for people to actually gravitate to your work and understand where you're coming from with it, but if you're being very authentic and very bold and very confident with it, people will see that and there's nothing that they can take from you. So um, once you're able to navigate that part of like just believing in yourself and being confident in yourself, it puts you in a different space where you, uh, you don't see like the need for any divisions. Like you enter into a space, you know that it's not you're not just coming here because the color is in, but you're coming here because you are supposed to be there. And it's just that type of confidence that you need to have to just like be able to just open the door 
and get in. But it's, it's difficult because you always always have to have people supporting that too. You cannot just do it by yourself. So always try to keep good people, good uh, relationships around you, people that you know believe in what you're doing. And um, with that, you wouldn't it wouldn't even matter like what space you're showing your work or like where you're going. So just um, try to. It, try to take that like whole, uh, I don't know, like blank image of how you're supposed to work or how you're supposed to create some type of work and then just be confident about your work and step into the room and make yourself known in that room and also be able to create spaces for yourself too because sometimes when you want to um, do something and you're not getting people to help with that, that's when you can also do something that like start showing anywhere. Like it doesn't have to be a museum or like a gallery. You have to start doing by yourself and showing your work. And then when the other people realize how cool you are, they'll come back. So it's just something that you have to kind of start for yourself and just be in that. So yeah. Thank you. Um, I should tell you. So you have that one direct.
break through by himself in a way. Yeah. But don't do it so you don't, it doesn't have to be big, but you can start somewhere and just go go for it. I think that's that's one thing that's helped me. So yeah. thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you.